Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we're taking a look at 15 plus tips to extend the battery life on your Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. Without any delay, let's go ahead and get started. So the first tip that I wanna share is the first couple weeks that you get this machine, be patient. So during the first couple of weeks, there are a lot of updates that get trickled down from both Microsoft and Samsung. And for me, in using the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, as well as last year's Galaxy Book Pro 360, both of them suffered from being very laggy and they just felt very bottlenecked the first couple of weeks due to all these updates getting installed. I noticed the fans were kicking on quite a bit. The machine runs hotter than it does now. It's just not a, it's not a good first look the first couple of weeks that you get it. So my recommendation is just to be patient the first couple of weeks. Uh, it really does make a huge difference and it's not like BS talk either. I tell everyone in the comments that just get this machine to just be patient the first couple of weeks and it's going to start running like a champ. And it really does. That holds true for this year's model and last year's. The next tip I want to share, and this one I'm really reluctant to share because I hate having to say this, and that is my recommendation is to stop using Google Chrome. So Google Chrome in the past two to three years has become a disaster in how much resources it's taking up and the battery utilization that it requires. Uh, you don't even have to have a lot of tabs open, just a couple tabs open and it will start sucking down your battery. And it's really odd that it does this because both it and Microsoft Edge are Chromium based, whereas Firefox is Mozilla. So you would think that the Edge and Chrome browsers would perform in one fashion and Firefox would be in a different area. Both Firefox and Edge outperform Chrome in regards to how much battery it uses, or I should say lack thereof. Um, they also utilize less resources. And that's without like enabling Google extensions and all of that. So Google Chrome has been a, a real pitfall for folks on laptops the past couple years, and I don't see it getting any better anytime soon. And it's a real shame too, because you can see I have Chrome here installed right now. It's one of the first things that I install. But if you start looking at your resources here, we'll press Control Shift Escape. We take a look at this. No matter which apps you have loaded, you're pretty much always gonna see Google Chrome on top if you sort by CPU and memory. I don't know what the deal is, but the last two or three years, they really have stifled the performance of Chrome in regards to how much it uses. So maybe try sticking with Microsoft Edge for a day, then go back to Google Chrome for a day and see how much of a battery difference you're seeing. Um, I see a lot of folks on Reddit complaining that they're only getting four to five hours of usage out of their Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 when surfing the web using Chrome and they're getting you know, 10 plus hours when using Microsoft Edge, Firefox, or the Brave browser, any of these other alternatives besides Google Chrome. The next tip I wanna share for those of you that are new to the Galaxy Book line of computers is we have a performance option that we can toggle that has a drastic impact on your battery life. So to change between these different performance options, you're gonna to wanna to press the function key plus F11, and you'll just keep holding on the function key while you toggle through the different options. You'll see here we have silent, quiet, optimized, and high performance. And the difference in battery life that you get between all these modes is quite a bit. Like silent and quiet mode will be drastically different than running in optimized or high performance mode. I typically keep mine in optimized mode because I, I do want a lot of performance um, and I'm willing to forsake some of that battery life. But I'm telling you, toggling between these different performance options while you're juggling your workload can make a huge difference. So if you're just browsing the web, put it down to silent or quiet. And if you're doing some video editing or some other intensive tasks like gaming, put it in optimized or high performance. You will get better battery life if you get used to managing this performance option that's available to you. Again, that's function plus F11. All right, so the next tip I wanna share with you guys is about the battery performance option that's available in Windows. And there's two of them really. There's the one from, there's the one from Samsung that we just touched on, right? Pressing function plus F11 to switch between the performance modes. And then we also have the power mode that's available from Microsoft. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So to access it, just open up your start menu and start typing power plan. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on edit power plan. And once you're on this screen, go ahead to this toolbar here and hit the up arrow to go up one screen. All right, and that's gonna give you two options here. One is balanced and the other one is Samsung. All right, and what I recommend here, and I know this sounds like a contradiction to what you would expect, is I recommend going out of the Samsung mode to balanced. All right, you'll see there that the screen just dimmed just a little bit, 
Overall, the balanced mode uses just a little bit less resources than whatever modes you might be in. By modes, I mean function plus F11 with the Samsung one. I leave the Samsung one on just because I like a little bit more luminance out of the screen. And like I said, I don't mind the battery conservation issue, but it seems to be a little bit more balanced overall and you'll get a little bit more battery life if you switch the Windows power saving mode over to balanced. So this next tip is very useful since this display is an OLED panel. OLED panels being ones in which the black pixels don't get illuminated at all. So there's no battery being used at all for any type of black pixels. And what I recommend is that you keep this laptop in dark mode. So in order to do that, go ahead and go to the start menu and you can just start typing in dark mode. And that's gonna pull up color settings right here. We'll go ahead and click on that. All right, and the first option that we have is choose your mode and you're going to have dark, light, and custom. So I'm pretty sure by default this shipped in light mode. Uh, I don't really remember, I've had this since launch, but uh, one of the first things you wanna do is switch this over to dark mode. You are guaranteed to get better battery life if you keep this laptop in dark mode. It's an OLED screen, there's no and ifs or buts about it, you're gonna save battery for sure. So I definitely recommend switching this panel out to be in dark mode to extend your battery life. All right, the next tip I wanna share involves us going into the Samsung settings and not Windows settings. So let's go ahead and go into that real quick. And you can see we have it right there. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then we wanna click on battery and performance. And we have two options here that are both gonna help with conserving your battery and getting the most out of your battery in the long run. So the first one is the battery protection feature. You'll see here I have it off which means this laptop will charge up past 85% all the way to 100% when I put it on the charger. Now, if you're planning on keeping this laptop for several years, like I upgrade them every year, like I will again when the Book 3 Pro comes out, so I'm not worried about it personally, but if you do plan on keeping it for several years, I recommend turning this on. This will max out your charge to 85%, and it's gonna help prolong your battery life in the long run. Yes, you'll get a little bit less battery life per charge, but it's going to extend the overall battery life in the long run. And while we're here, we have one more option that can have an impact on your battery life as well, is you have the ability to turn on USB charging. And what that does is you have um, three different USB-C ports, right? Two, one is Thunderbolt, two are regular USB-C. If you turn this option on, it enables you to charge other devices like a cell phone or a tablet from these USB-C ports and it's constantly outputting power to the ports, even if you're not using them. So if you're not charging anything and if you don't need that option, I highly recommend turning USB charging off. That'll squeeze out a little bit of extra battery life from your Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. All right, so the next tip is to go ahead and turn off your phone link if you have that set up. So what you wanna do is search for phone link. All right. There's the app right here. And you'll see here that I don't have mine set up because I don't use it. I did use it with last year's Galaxy Book Pro 360, but not this year's. Um, but you, what you'll wanna do is you can go ahead and if you do have it set up, you can compress Control, Shift, Escape, and you can go over here to Startup. And you can disable Phone Link from here, from auto starting. Now, how much battery life you're gonna save from doing this? Eh, I don't know, but it's one less connection that's constantly being established that you're doing away with. And as you minimize connections, you're definitely gonna save some battery life. So keep this in mind. If you're using the phone link, hey, totally cool. You know, keep using it because I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal. You might see a one or 2% difference throughout the day. But if you're not using it, or you're not even familiar with this, go ahead and press Control Shift Escape. Look to see if it's in your startup items and go ahead and press uh, phone link or type in phone link in the start menu and see if you already have it set up. Um, and you can disable it from there, or like I said, from that startup options by pressing Control shift escape But um, if you don't need it, just disable it. One less thing. Another option to squeeze just a little bit more battery life out of your laptop, your Galaxy Book, is to minimize your backlighting. So you have a quick toggle to do that. It's actually pretty sweet. If you press Function, F9, you'll see that the keyboard backlighting changes here. Let me do that again. It went from 0% to 30 to 60 to 100%. So if you wanna squeeze a little bit more out of your battery life, go ahead and turn backlighting off on your keyboard. All right, another option to get quite a bit more battery life out of your Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 is to change the behavior of what happens to your machine when you close the lid. So go ahead and click on start, and you can just start typing out the words close lid, and you'll have this option that says change what closing the lid does. So go ahead and click on that. 
All right, what I would recommend <clears throat> is on battery power, when you close the lid, most people by default, and I think by default, this is a setting too, is to have it in sleep. Sleep uses quite a bit of power still while you're in sleep mode. If you really want to extend the battery life while you're on battery, switch us over to Hibernate. Hibernate will use a lot less power. You'll get a lot longer battery life. Um, definitely recommend this one and you'll notice a difference. Go ahead and try it for one night. Put it into sleep one time when you're done and then put it in Hibernate. Check your battery percentages the next day. I'm pretty confident you're going to see much better results if you keep this in Hibernate. All right, the next tip I want to share and we kind of touched base on this already, is minimizing the number of startup apps. So in order to do that, you're going to press Control, Shift, plus Escape. And then over here on this screen, we have Startup. And you can just go through your whole list of applications that you have, whether they're system applications or ones that you've installed, and you can change a startup status. And you can change it from disabled to enabled for any one of them that you want to load up at boot up and which ones you don't. You know, there's a lot of bloatware on any of these uh, laptops that come out. So you might want to go through here, just spend a little time going through this list and start disabling the ones you don't want to start up that are going to suck down your battery in the background and you're not even going to know about it. All right, so the next tip for saving a little bit more battery life, if you don't need this on, is to go ahead and turn Bluetooth off. So if you go to your start menu and just start typing Bluetooth, Bluetooth and other settings, and here you see our first toggle is an on-off toggle. I'll go ahead and turn mine off. Turn this off. Keep it off. It's one, more, one less radio broadcasting out on your laptop. You will save battery for sure. How much? I don't know. Like I said, I typically keep it on here. But, um, you know, try it on for a day. Try it off for a day. If you're not big into having, like, wireless earbuds or a wireless mouse connected and you don't need Bluetooth on, by all means, disable it. You will save battery for sure. All right, the next tip for extending a little bit more battery life out of your laptop is to disable HDR. Now, this is not something I'm willing to partake in because I like HDR on this machine. We get 500 nits of peak brightness as opposed to the 400 nits with regular SDR content. And I think it just looks a little bit better with HDR on. But let me show you where this setting is. You will save battery by disabling this, especially if you watch a lot of HDR content on, say, Netflix, HBO Max, or HDR-enabled videos on YouTube. Those will push this display harder. It will push this OLED panel a lot harder and you will suck up battery a lot quicker playing HDR content. But you can disable it at the system level. Let me show you to do that real quick. You go open up the start menu and just start typing HDR and you'll have HDR settings. All right, it'll give you some options, but right here at the middle section of it is we have use HDR. And you see here, I have it turned off for this. You turn it on here. And you'll see that doesn't do much to the screen, but that's because we're not looking at any HDR content. Um, but you also have the option to enable auto HDR as well. So I do recommend playing with your HDR settings if you want to squeeze just a little bit more out of it. You know, and take a look at the content with HDR disabled and not too. Because keep in mind, it is only a 100 nit boost, which in TV land, 100 nits isn't a big deal as far as seeing HDR content. You want a lot more than that. You know, a lot of content is mastered to 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 nits, and we're not even getting close to that. So you might not even see a big upgrade by having HDR on. And if you don't see it, turn it off. You will save battery. Another thing to make sure that your machine is in tip-top shape and that you're not using unnecessary battery life is to do a manual check for Samsung updates once in a while. So I know most, most folks are used to the Windows updates, right, and how to check those, but on these Samsung machines, they have their own set of updates available. And you see here, I have some updates pending um, that are specific to Samsung machines. So in order to check for Samsung updates, just go to the start menu and start typing Samsung update. Go ahead and click on that. It'll take a little bit to load up and it's gonna start checking for updates in the background. And I really do recommend keeping this machine up to date. And like we discussed at the beginning of the video, the first couple weeks are uh, a little rocky, but uh, you know, after that, it does a pretty good job of keeping itself updated. But as you can see here, I have two critical updates available right now from the Samsung update service, my graphics driver and my system bias. <laughs> so these are two huge updates, which I will do after making this video. But don't lose sight of this, because I know it's real easy to forget about the Samsung update in lieu of Microsoft Windows updates. Okay, another tip I want to share, and one that I can't really demonstrate on here because I've already done this, 
And that is when you first get this machine, if you don't plan on continuing to use the McAfee antivirus that it comes pre-installed with, uninstall it. Just go to add remove programs and get rid of it. It will suck down your battery life for sure. And you already have Windows Defender on here. Now, you know, I'm not an advocate either way of which direction you go as to whether or not you want to use one of these third party virus scanners. But I will say this, I've had totally okay luck with just using Windows Defender the past few years. But I do want to point out there that I very rarely go onto any type of sketchy sites. You know, for like for my APKs and all that, I go to APK Mirror. I'm not looking at any adult content. You know, that's a big thing as far as being sketchy sites and needing virus protection. And I'm not looking for free applications and free downloads. So if you're just a regular user that wants to surf regular websites, you know, Google, Microsoft, all these types of things, and you're not into any of those types of activities, I would just recommend getting rid of McAfee. I mean, it is kind of a bloatware hog as far as the amount of battery and the amount of system utilization it's gonna require. But, you know, if you feel a little bit better having that virus protection, go ahead and leave it installed. But I did wanna throw it out there that it does come pre-installed for a limited time offer as far as how long it lasts for on these Galaxy Book machines. Uh, another tip I wanna share, uh, this should be an obvious one, but uh, if you're new to OLED panels, it may not be so obvious. Each one of these OLED pixels do draw a lot of power. So keeping your screen brightness down to whatever you can manage will have a huge, probably quite possibly the biggest impact on your battery life. So right now for the sake of this video, I'm pegged up pretty high. We were close to 100%. But typically when I'm sitting in my office, I'm down to here like 60, maybe 70%. This looks a little bit better. But uh, and if I go all the way up to like 100%, that battery will start dipping down really fast. So keep your brightness in tune here. Um, you also see here too that I'm just pressing these without pressing the function key. That's because you can just press function F12 one time to lock the function row. That way you don't have to keep pressing function and then pushing your brightness up and down. So yeah, keep the brightness down on this. Um, one last tip I wanna share with you guys is if all else fails and things just don't seem right, like you suspect something is wrong with your battery, reboot your system Press the F2 key multiple times and that'll enter you into the system bias. And right inside Samsung system bias is a battery calibration tool. Um, you can ju it's just a click to run type thing. It'll take a couple minutes to run and that will recalibrate your battery and then you'll restart your computer. It'll prompt you. So you'll do that right afterwards. And that's basically gonna reset your zero to 100% percentage as far as what it reads from your battery. So if you're seeing things look a little bit fishy and you've tried all these tips and you just feel like, man, there is just something wrong with my machine. Before contacting Samsung Chat or Samsung Support, go ahead and try to do that battery recalibration. Again, you press F2 to enter the BIOS once you're restarting, and inside the BIOS there will be a battery calibration tool. All right, guys, so this has been 15 plus tips to help you get the most out of your Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360's battery life. I hope this was helpful to a few of you, and as always, thanks for watching.